What is up folks, Stephen here from Moving to Canada. March is coming to an end, which means we have a monthly roundup. Firstly though, we wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who watched our last video where we did a monthly roundup. It was the first of its kind for Moving to Canada and you folks seem to enjoy it. So we are asking you to show some love once again and subscribe to the channel and give a little thumbs up. We would greatly appreciate it. Without further ado, let's break down some news. First off, express entries on the cards. We had our largest ever all program draw on March 15th, 2023, inviting over 7,000 applicants from the pools. On top of all of that, we finally got an update on the targeted express entry draws last week, when Minister of Immigration Sean Fraser said targeted draws are now expected the second half of 2023, not this spring. Yeah, I know. I was expecting some more as well, but uh, hey. And then, postgraduate work permits whose documents expired or are expiring in the year 2023 qualify for an additional or extended work permit of up to 18 months. Starting April 6, 2023, the measure will allow PGWP holders who wish to stay in Canada to opt in to a facilitated process to extend their work permit. PGWP holders whose documents have already expired in 2023 and those who are eligible for the 2022 PGWP facilitative measure will also be able to apply for an additional 18 month work permit. Those with expired work permits will be able to restore their status even if they are beyond the 90 day restoration period and will receive an interim work authorization while awaiting processing of their new work permit. IRCC says PGWP holders who are eligible for the new measure will soon receive messages about logging into their online account to opt in and update their key personnel information. According to IRCC's figures, about 127,000 PGWPs are expiring in 2023, though about 67,000 PGWP holders have already applied for permanent residence and won't need to extend their work permit through this measure. So great news all around for those of us on the PGWP. Now, before we go any further, we wanted to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, WISE. WISE is built with the goal of saving you money when you're transferring and exchanging money internationally. It's a service that I use personally to send money back home, and I've found that it has some of the lowest fees for any kind of international transfer, while also being one of the quickest options available for getting money from one international account to another. If you want to check it out for yourself, I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video, so you can take a look in your own time. And then, in the coming years, Ontario will be welcoming more newcomers through its Provincial Nominee Program. In 2023, Ontario will be able to nominate 16,500 immigrants, according to its PMP allocation set by the federal government. However, since this year was the first time the provinces got a multi-year allocation plan, a number of the provinces are also publishing their provisional allocations for the next three years. Because of this, we know that by 2025, Ontario is expecting to issue more than 18,000 nominations to PMP candidates. With a reported 300,000 jobs going unfulfilled daily in Ontario, the province expects to select more of the workers needed to fill gaps in industries like the skilled trades, technology and healthcare. So if you work in those sectors and want to move to Ontario, then good news for you. Next up, Canada announced a number of measures for Turkish and Syrian nationals following the devastating earthquake in February. As part of Canada's response to the situation in Turkey and Syria, IRCC has been prioritizing temporary and permanent resident applicants for people affected by the earthquakes, including refugee applicants. IRCC is also taking steps to allow Turkish and Syrian nationals already in Canada to extend their stay. From March 29th to September 25th, 2023, Turkish and Syrian nationals can continue to study, work or visit family by applying to extend their status for free. IRCC will also make an open work permit pathway available for Turkish and Syrian nationals who are already in Canada. These measures will make it easier for Turkish and Syrian nationals who wish to extend their temporary status in Canada and to move between temporary streams, such as work, student or visitor. In addition, given that some permanent resident applicants have lost their travel documents as a result of the earthquake, Canada will waive the requirement to hold a passport or travel document to be approved for a permanent resident visa. IRCC is also making it easier for Canadian citizens and permanent residents from Turkey and Syria to return to Canada by waiving fees for temporary passports, limited validity passports or emergency travel documents, as well as Canadian citizenship certificates and permanent resident travel documents. New and existing temporary and permanent resident applications from the affected regions are all being processed on a priority basis. These include visitor visa applications for immediate family members of Canadian citizenships and Canadian permanent residents. And finally, 
With Russia continuing its unjustifiable invasion of Ukraine, Minister Fraser and the Government of Canada will be extending the Canada-Ukraine authorization for emergency travel, meaning Ukrainians and their family members will have until July 15, 2023 to apply overseas for a visa free of charge. Now, anyone holding a Canada-Ukraine authorization emergency travel visa will have until March 31st, 2024 to travel to Canada under the special measure. And these holders who are already here in Canada will have until March 31st, 2024 to extend or adjust their temporary status through these measures free of charge. IRCC continue to say that settlement services will remain available to Ukrainians and their family members after they arrive so that they can fully participate in Canadian communities while they're here. Ukrainians and their family members will also continue to benefit from the one-time transitional financial support, as well as from access to emergency accommodation for up to two weeks if needed after they arrive in Canada. And that is it from me, folks, and a roundup of Canadian immigration news for the month of March. Let us know what you think about it in the comments down below, and do show some love by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. That's all from me. Until next time.